recent developments from Gaza, the Israeli army has reported the deaths of three soldiers in northern Gaza. This incident occurred amid an extensive military operation that has been underway for nearly three weeks, resulting in the deaths of hundreds of Palestinians. The families of the soldiers have been notified. Meanwhile, tensions have escalated in southern Lebanon, where the UN interim force in Lebanon, known as UNIFIL, has withdrawn its peacekeepers from an observation post in Dera after coming under fire from Israeli forces. The situation unfolded as Israeli soldiers engaged in house-clearing operations fired at the post upon realizing they were being observed. UNIFIL has reported a series of incidents where Israeli forces have damaged their equipment and demanded the withdrawal of peacekeeping positions along the Blue Line. Fortunately, there were no casualties among peacekeepers during these recent exchanges of fire. Adding to the growing humanitarian crisis, the World Health Organization has lost contact with its personnel at Kamal Adwan Hospital in northern Gaza following an Israeli raid. WHO Chief Tedros Ghebreyesus has expressed deep concern over this development, noting that the hospital was overwhelmed with nearly 200 patients and hundreds seeking shelter from the violence. In a significant development, India and China have commenced the implementation of a new agreement aimed at resolving their long-standing military standoff in the Himalayan region. This breakthrough follows a recent meeting between Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chinese President Xi Jinping at the BRICS summit. Troops from both nations have begun withdrawing from key confrontation points, signaling a major thaw in relations since deadly clashes in 2020. While the two sides work towards stabilizing border tensions, India remains cautious about rebuilding economic ties with China, having previously imposed restrictions on flights and investments. Meanwhile, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz is in India seeking to enhance defence and economic collaboration with New Delhi. Scholz emphasised the need for closer military ties as India looks to diversify its arms procurement away from Russia. His visit includes discussions on renewable energy projects and a potential free trade agreement between India and the European Union, despite challenges in the agricultural sector. With the record investments and infrastructure projects underway, both countries are keen on forging a stronger partnership to counterbalance growing geopolitical influences. In a significant farewell event, the Supreme Court held a full court reference for outgoing Chief Justice of Pakistan, Qazi Faiz Isa. Justice Isa, who assumed office on 17 September 2023, was celebrated for his contributions to constitutional law and women's rights. Attorney General Mansoor Usman Awan praised his historical decisions and commitment to democracy. Justice Yahya Afridi is said to take over the next Chief Justice, emphasizing his focus on addressing judicial concerns in Pakistan's most remote districts and ensuring the rule of law prevails. In a related development, a petition challenging the constitutionality of the recently enacted 26th Amendment has been filed in the Supreme Court. The amendment has raised concerns over judicial independence and the process through which it was passed. The petitioner argues that improper means may have influenced the necessary votes undermining the constitutional framework. If proven, the petition calls for striking down the amendment and reinstating previous judicial protocols to preserve the integrity of the judiciary. The Foreign Office of Pakistan has responded sharply to comments made by UN Human Rights Chief Volker Turk, who criticized the 26th Amendment for potentially undermining judicial independence. The spokesperson labeled the remarks as baseless and urged focus on more pressing human rights issues. President Biden for the release of political prisoners in Pakistan, including former Prime Minister Imran Khan. The Foreign Office dismissed this appeal as an interference in Pakistan's domestic affairs, emphasizing the need for constructive dialogue in bilateral relations.